कृपया राष्ट्रगान को सम्मान देने के लिए अपने स्थान पर खड़े हो जाएं। May I request the Honorable President Shri Pranam Mukherjee to light the ceremonial lamp to begin this momentous occasion and I request the dignitaries on the dais to kindly join the inaugural ceremony. Hamari yaan parampara rahi hai, kisi bhi shubh shuruat mein deep prajwalit kiya jata hai. Ham ride se swagat karte hai maaniniya Rashtrapati Shri Pranam Mukherjee ka. Ham swagat karte hai Dr. Ashwini Kumar, Honorable Union Minister of Law and Justice. दिल्ली की मुख्यमंत्री माननीय श्रीमती शीला दीक्षित ऑनरेबल जस्टिस पी सदाशिवम जज सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ इंडिया ऑनरेबल जस्टिस डी मुरुगेशन चीफ जस्टिस हाई कोर्ट ऑफ दिल्ली साथ में हैं स्टेज पर दिल्ली बार काउंसिल के चेयरमैन श्री आरएस गुस्वामी एंड वाइस चेयरमैन श्री राकेश शेरावत सभी के स्वागत में अपने विचार व्यक्त करने के लिए अब मैं आमंत्रित करती हूं दिल्ली बार काउंसिल के चेयरमैन श्री आर एस गोस्वामी को नमस्कार एंड आ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे ऑन दिस ऑकेजन आई वेलकम रेस्पेक्टेड श्री प्रणब मुखर्जी द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया रेस्पेक्टेड डॉक्टर सुनील कुमार यूनियन मिनिस्टर ऑफ लॉ एंड जस्टिस रेस्पेक्टेड श्रीमती शीला दीक्षित चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ दहली Respected Justice P. Sadaswam, Supreme Court of India. Respected Judge D. Murgeshan, Chief Justice of High Court of Delhi. Respected Judge of Delhi High Court, Chairman of State Bar Councils, Member of the Bar Council of India, and all Executive Member of all Bar Associations of Delhi, Member of the Bar and other dignities present today. It is my proud privilege and honor to welcome His Excellency, the Honorable President of India, Sri Pranam Mukherjee, the life pillar of democratic India, a man of humble origin, an eloquent orator and a scholar, a 13th president of India with a political career of over five decades. Sri Mukherjee is a living legend having great experience in governance with a rare distinction of having served at different capacity as a foreign minister, defense minister, and finance minister of India. Sri Mukherjee's intellectual and political experience as well as a remarkable knowledge of international relations and parliamentary process are widely admired. During his political career, he was admired even by the opposition parties for his remarkable work. I am highly obliged with the support, cooperation, and blessing from His Excellency here on this occasion. I would like to take this opportunity to show some light on the problems and plight faced by the advocates of the Hill and as well as the whole legal fraternity of the India. Being the chairman, it is my humble duty to think about the welfare of the entire advocates of Delhi, especially deprived members of the bar, young lawyers, lady members, and new interns. In this regard, I assure you all that the Bar Council of Delhi is putting their sincere efforts for the same. It is tried that the democracy has three basic pillars, which are legislature, executive, and judiciary. The advocates are the part and parcel of the judicial system and are given the high pedestal and I referred as the officer of the court. It is ironical that on one hand, they are given such a high position as officer of the court in the administration of justice, but on the other hand, there is no economic security of the lawyers and their family members, especially at the time when they suffer from any illness or any tragedy. Undoubtedly, in 2001, for the first time, the Advocate Welfare Act came into force and it has to provision to financially aid the advocate in case of illness. I am glad to inform here 
that our Honorable Chief Minister Srimati Sila Dixit made the contribution of Rs. 1 crore on behalf of Delhi government for the Advocate Welfare Fund in 2001. That has really worked as a boon in the favor of the advocates. I am really obliged to our Honorable Chief Minister on behalf of the whole legal fraternity. But there today, I would like to put forth my request that we need to take more sincere efforts to increase the Advocates Welfare Fund, to give professional security for the Advocate Fraternity of Delhi. The spouse and dependent of the Advocate should be incorporated in case of their illness in the Act. Third, the welfare stamp of Rs. 5 and 10 should also be increased. I request to our Law Minister. Now, I make a humble request on behalf of the entire legal fraternity of Delhi to our Honorable Chief Minister that we need your more help and assistance by getting a substantial contribution in the Advocate Welfare Fund today at this moment so that we are, we as the representative of the Bar Council are in better position, in effective position to fulfill our duties towards the member of the legal fraternity of Delhi and to help them in unavoidable circumstances. Now, not taking much time for our honorable dignities, I conclude here with a wholehearted welcome to all the dignities on the dais and of the dais present today. Please give a big hand. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. I am delighted to be a part of the National Seminar on Welfare of Lawyers organized by Bar Council of Delhi and offer courteous wishes to all advocates present. Legal profession in India seems to have grown over a period of less than 50 years and accounts as one of the largest and most influential in the governance of the country. I intend to stress on the importance of legal, edu legal education only to enable the Bar Council to take a note of the some of the some of the problems for upliftment of young lawyers, particularly women entering into legal profession. The Bar Council of India has always remained a key player in development and should, that, should to that extent frame policies, rules and regulations, organize camps, conferences for keeping in touch to the legal issue. Safeguarding the rights and interests of advocates on role is one among the many mandates of the Bar Council. Pursuant to its statutory function, this national seminar organized by the Bar Council of Delhi shall attempt to address the issues regarding the betterment of legal fraternity with special focus on certain sections of advocates and work even better. In this endeavor, the services rendered by Bar Council of India and the State Bar Associations are highly appreciated. I would forward my wish warm wishes to all the members of the bar and congratulate them for the successful working towards the development of the society and doing fair justice to the legal profession. The legal education is one of the major important aspects in marking standard of legal profession. The simple reason why students take up the law as a career is that law being challenging in nature will remain in pursuit of intellectual vigor, thereby rewarding. It could be also rewarding by way of working for the disadvantaged people, assisting them in realizing their rights. Even the little victories will provide a great sense of satisfaction, such as providing vital assistance to the colleagues. The challenge today is the mark of legal education to the students' community from coming from those uh, from uh, rural areas. Although legal education is important to those students, from rural areas, the quality and standard needs to see improvement. Such lawyers are not given apt knowledge 
about the way in which court function and how practice needs to be carried on. Given to the self-regulated nature of the profession and the lack of any form of professional security, the onus to help its member basically lies with the fellow advocates who have built a successful career. Another section that requires special attention is that of women advocates. Gender bias and discriminatory practices are present in the profession every even today with both work and fee for women lawyers not being on par with their male counterparts. Women advocates should actively participate in developing the <coughs> worsening conditions of women in our country. Battered women and their children can escape domestic violence with the help of women advocates. Women advocates should indulge in imparting legal education to women and children so that so as to support them and help them in knowing their rights and duties as well. Women advocates need to restrict themselves only to provide advocacy, but also motivate the children and get educated in the very elementary level. I sincerely hope and wish that this event sees its function by highlighting the prevalent conditions of lawyers, especially among the junior, deprived and women members of the bar, and encouraging schemes and programs to elevate their plight. How far the state could render their assistance to the Bar Council and to its members is the issue to be discussed in this seminar. I wish the seminar every success and thank the President of the Office Bearers of Bar Council of Delhi for giving me opportunity. Thank you very much. It is my privilege to participate in this national seminar on welfare schemes for the members of the bar, particularly junior members, differently abled members, and lady members of the bar. I express my warm felicitations and greetings to all the dignitaries present in this August gathering. In 1961, the elected body of the Bar Council of Delhi came into existence with around 3,000 advocates on its role. During my research, I came to know that within a period of 50 years, the advocates on role of Bar Council of Delhi have crossed 60,000. But uh, your president has said uh, it crossed 70,000. The increase in the number of advocates on its role is an echo of the progress. It also illustrates how effectively Delhi Bar Council has executed the vast responsibility it shoulders in a systematic manner in upholding the rule of law. One of the distinguishing features of the Bar Council of Delhi is that it comprises lawyers from across the length and breadth of the country, thus becoming premier cosmopolitan body representing the professional lawyers in our country. It can legitimately be proud of the glorious contribution its members have made to the evolution of laws and nation building. My heartiest wishes for the accomplishments achieved and for future endeavors. Legal profession is one of the most leading professions of intellectuals in the world. In India, the largest democracy in the world can be proud of the fact that it produces a major portion of lawyers in the world legal community. The Indian legal profession today consists approximately 12 lakh registered advocates and every year approximately 60 to 70 law graduates join legal profession in India. In the words of Fali S. Nariman, lawyers never retire. They, on they only drop dead. The roots of this profession lie even before independence. Many of the leading figures of our freedom movement were legal luminaries and their contribution to the national cause, both before and after independence, is part of our heritage. To name a few, Mahatma Gandhi, Surendranath Banerjee, Sardar Vallabhai Patel, Dada by Navaroji, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar, Pandit Modilal Nehru and Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru were all amongst the greatest sons of India who laid foundation for a modern and progressive India. Our constitution makers did not want 
economic or other disabilities to come in the way of securing justice. Some more clues for the benefit of young lawyers. The young lawyers and fresh law graduates face various problems in the initial stage of their career due to lack of experience and financial instability. However, embodied with a sense of independence and impartiality, they are well equipped to perform the work of court-appointed receivers and advocate commissioners. Courts in India have discretionary powers under the civil and criminal procedure laws to appoint receivers to manage and administer property of the parties pending final settlement of the dispute. They also help in proper execution of court decree. Further, in many cases, court commissioners are appointed to ascertain the correct position of property and its valuation. It is my firm belief that junior members of the bar can be entrusted with the responsibility of receivers, court commissioners, which they will fulfill with utmost sincerity and good faith. And as a chairman of National Legal Service Authority, I am taking uh, steps to include junior members in the panel of Legal Aid Council. In the same way, whenever any assistance is required in criminal and civil matters, services of young talent or lawyers may be utilized as amicus curiae. In Supreme Court, we are paying 7,000 rupees for appearance of an amicus curiae. So if a young lawyer is inducted, he will be benefited. I wish to conclude by applauding the Bar Council of Delhi for organizing this national seminar on welfare scheme for members of the Bar, which provides the common platform for interaction among the three wings of the government, executive, legislative, and judiciary. I hope that the deliberations and re reflections in this seminar will be real assistance in fostering schemes and suggestions for the prospective welfare schemes for the members of the bar. Thank you very much. We hardly need say that the lawyers community anywhere lead the community, lead society in the work that they do, the thoughts, processes that they present to society. Even in our freedom struggle, lawyers were in the forefront of our struggle and the result of that peaceful struggle was that India became free without any weapon having been used there. But the contribution of our lawyers and jurists is not just what they did during the freedom struggle. It continues to play a very vital role in conserving the liberty, equality, justice to all the citizens of our country. All of us, when we fear some injustice, whether personal or otherwise, or social or state from the state, we run to lawyers who give us the confidence and give us the justice that we deserve to have. Therefore, lawyers are not only just uh, custodians of a society, of a well-run civilized society, but they are also agents of peace and order in our societies. No society, we believe, can exist without lawyers, and therefore the mouthpiece of the common mass in the law court, which is represented by all of you, is something vital to a civilized society. We in the Delhi government recognize the need of welfare measures to be taken for in the interest of our lawyers. We started off some years ago, I think over, almost over a decade ago, by contributing rupees one crore for the welfare fund of the lawyers. However, standing here today, I feel the time has come then we, when we should review this and increase this amount quite substantially. I will await 
the guidance of Mr. Goswami and others to tell us exactly what we should do. And I can assure you, in the presence of no lesser person than the Rashtrapati of our nation, that your desire will be fulfilled. We shall do that. <laughs> Delhi has always come forward to do whatever it can to make the lives of both the lawyers and the litigants as comfortable as it possible. We started off some 10 years ago or 12 years ago for several decades with only about one or two 